Dave, and I'm the Executive Editor of Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining this month's installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, the Chief Data Officer, moderated each month by Tony Shaw. This month, Tony will be joined by three esteemed panelists to discuss the role of the Chief Data Officer. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, or if you like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag Dataversity. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. It is my pleasure to introduce to you and turn over the webinar to the Dataversity founder and CEO, Tony Shaw. Tony, hello and welcome. Everyone, thank you for joining us for our discussion today. Uh, we'll be in a series called the CEO Agenda, and we're tracking um, and uh, where we're going, where we're going in future. Uh, look, topics related to data information management that are rising higher on the priority list of most organizations. Some of our previous conversations have been about metrics for information management right structure and organization to compete with data. But today's conversation is about the emergence of the chief data officer role, which can be uh, a little bit strongly contentious, at least if you're to pay attention to the discussions that it is in forums uh, LinkedIn. And maybe we'll see some of that during our chat topics today as well. I'll wait in just a moment. Uh, take a higher level view. Uh, we have two executives who have the senior job title specifically. He spends much of his consulting life advising chief data officers or else helping companies and the requirements of the CDO that planning to hire. For those who may be coming to this topic recently, uh, I think perhaps qualify that both CDOs are from the financial services industry. And services has been a pioneer in hiring people into the CDO role. So uh, most large financials today do have the CDO role in place. It's probably better to say, too, that that role is better find in the financial services industry than most others. But there are other sectors like healthcare, government, uh, services, and even in internet startups. Embrace the CDO role, so possible if we have this conversation in another view, then it'll be a, quite a different one. If you're in a different industry, I just want you to be aware that there might be some bias towards experience in the discussion today. Let me introduce our three panelists. First, Tone is the Chief Data Officer of KeyBank, has for the past almost two years. She's been in the bank for 15 years and is based in Cleveland. She also has an Ohio connection, but uh, Fort Worth, Texas, as the CDO of TD Ameritrade. So been in that role for two years. And to taking it on, he was primarily a consultant uh, over the, in the area of information and data management uh, leading up to his appointment. He is the outlier in this case, as, as John is, but uh, he's the CEO of the consulting firm Q, John St. Louis, Missouri. He's a terrific author on topics such as data governance and enterprise information management, and uh, was an analyst at the Meta Group in a previous life. So, uh, this is our triangle of expertise today, inviting the them to comment in just a moment. But before we do, uh, let's just get a couple of data points real quickly. Could you please bring up our first poll? Let's give everybody to just give them input on your organization currently has a CDO. So a yes, and it's a role that's called CDO. Yes, we give it a name. Appointing one shortly. 
But no, there are no plans at all to appoint one. So we'll give you to that. focused on who should the CDO report to? What's that one to answer if you don't, but, but hazard a guess anyway if you, if you would. So, just a moment. So, five options here. If you think it should be something else, you'll just have to make do with five that we've Executive officer, chief operating officer, chief financial officer, chief officer, and chief technical officer. And hopefully, the time being, we just uh, want to gather the data. And tell me, can we turn around? the results on those pretty quickly or do you need something in the background there? The second is just closing now. So I have okay. the results for that in just a moment and the results are already up for the first one. Where do we see those? Please? It give me just a second while this one closes. So look at the first poll Results of the first poll. Uh, Sorry, stretch that. Yeah, thirty-seven percent said uh, no, no, and no CDO and no plans. So thirteen percent said yes, and the role is called CDO. Eight uh, percent said yes, we have a top executive, and nine uh, percent said no, but we are planning to add one. So. A third and a third. Um, interesting. So many folks are here today, but, but with no plans to do CDO. I guess maybe they're doing some research on whether that's something they should do. Can we switch to the results for the second poll? Absolutely. Results for the second one. So CDO report two. Uh, the results are 26% said the CEO, 24% said the COO, 16% said uh, CIO. Five percent said CFO and three percent said CTO. Okay, seeing that result on my screen, is there anything you can do for that? It should be. Well, we'll we'll move the time being. Um, maybe if there's just a, d a delay in the um. Get into the part of our discussion. Um, uh, to our panelists, welcome. Good to have you with us today. Uh, I'm going to start with, with you, please. I'd like to invite your key bank to the role of Chief Data Officer. The, um, the role I took, uh, created at the time when I took the role uh, in um, September of 2012, and it was the culmination of a, a series of events that had taken place. We had a number of projects um, that were all in flight, had a number of de dependencies upon each other, especially related to data. And when one of the projects went off the rails, the rest of the projects went off the rails. And um, there was a strong acknowledgement that if we didn't think about data in an enterprise way, we would be building things from um, each of our line of business perspectives. So if we built something to satisfy the risk regulatory side, we would have um, built something to meet our um, B2B businesses as well as the B2C side. So uh, the, the combination of that said, let's step back and think about how to manage data from an enterprise perspective. And started on a little bit of a journey of exploring about what does that mean, what does it mean um, from either a, like a project and program perspective, and then what would you need to sustain that work on an ongoing basis? And uh, that's where we landed on building 
enterprise data infrastructure and as a um, partner to that, needing to have a sustainability office to go with it, both from a technology perspective as well as from the business side, you can think of governance, management, and all the pieces that go with that. Um, and decided on in the spring, actually March, April of uh, 2012, when they decided to create the role of a trade officer, and then um, we filled it, obviously, with self in September of that year. So. How does it compare with your experience, Derek? So it was uh, it was roughly the same timing uh, that um, TD were was thinking of uh, actually getting a a person that could head up the data strategy for the company. Um, the reason they got to that point was. Um, and I was at that stage consulting to uh, TD Trade. Um, uh, the essential reason that they'd reached that conclusion was that um, to in the company to continue to grow, he uh, prepared for change, and to even know what areas to grow in, um, they realized that they were going to need to really get a strong hand on data analytics um, and you know, from the word go it was seen as as being sort of a, a complete end-to-end -end, uh, vision um, the life cycle of, of, of data um, you know as with many companies in the finance industry uh, TD Ameritrade has grown through acquisitions and um, you know uh, those, but they can only give you growth to a certain uh, level, and you really have to start looking internally and saying, how can we, you know, from our data resource, how can we understand more about our business and more of the opportunities that we have? Uh, how can we get closer to our clients and understand them better? So the emphasis was really on how do we start a um, great opportunity uh, to figure we can take the company to a new level of growth. So there was, there was a, a, a uh, behind it that was more just, you know, uh, compliance and and governance type of issues clearly. Uh, John, what do you, what do you see in your experience? Please? What motivation or or combination of moments for creating the role of chief data officer? Uh, of, uh, that was for me, uh, Tony. John here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, that was a interference or something on the phone. Anyway. Um, reasons stand up besides the ones that were mentioned. One uh, I've seen is a competitive nature where uh, it is that a market share has been threatened uh, and it can be traced back to some type of data deficiency. Compliance is a big one uh, and it's becoming bigger in non-financial. It's been financial, but um, uh, also in health care, uh, several places moving in the healthcare industry for CEOs. Uh, I believe uh, Derek touched on one really growth in market share. Uh, organizations can't grow by mergers and acquisitions anymore. Um, uh, I see the, I call it data, we used to talk about disparate data, now I call it about desperate data, just vile there, uh, because there's so many initiatives going on and everyone's running into each other. Uh, and I, I and uh, Ursula hinted on that one. And then the last one I've seen is is I've seen one example of a Me Too, which is uh, Cogswell Cogs has one, so now Spacely Sprockets needs to have one. Uh, I just find one example of that. So um, in line with what uh, the other panelists have said, and and a few other reasons there. Well, let let's jump ahead in the sequence questions for a minute then, because um, the two aspect is. Uh, Interesting. Why is it that financial services has has first to embrace this role? Do you think? Um, maybe I could start uh, ask Eric to to start it out. 
think broadly speaking, if you look at the finance industry, um, financial crisis, and there's a, a lot of spotlight that has been turned on to and risk and, you know, the increased regulations that have been coming out are really requiring organizations to, uh, for the word, uh, get their act together around around HR and six. Um, expected to a certain level of um, control of their data and uh, to be able to report out on it on a time basis. Um, so this has been a big push for the financial industry. Um, but then, like, in addition to that, there's always the growth side as well, uh, because in any disruption uh, marketplace, there's always an opportunity to you know, for the the quick and swift to grow an extra uh, market share. So I, it's an uh, it's the two together. Um, see that, please. Has yes. I was just going to repeat the question, but um. Right. Yeah. Um. The um. I, from from our perspective, it was a combination of in order a lot of the regulatory needs that we've had. Um. We've added people, right? Instead of um, improving the processes and the uh, availability of the data. Um, so we were adding people pretty um, consistently in order to <clears throat> meet the, the regulatory needs. At the same time, with the issues um, that we've been faced with, coming up with new ways to actually look at our customers in order to come up with additional revenue opportunities was growing exponentially. So the nation both spoke to creating this type of a, um, environment in order to do this and the role to manage the data. Uh, so it's probably a mix of both the type of environment that we've been in, both on the regulatory side and on the interest rate pressures that I think has driven financial services to move in this direction more quickly. The regulatory piece is um, extremely significant because now um, with the additional types of, of regulators um, that are asking banks to provide, we're also looking for uh, extreme transparency on the data itself be able to, when we put a, a, um, an answer to a question to them, um, they want to be able to trace that data all the way back to the source system. They want to see the um, uh, data that goes with it. They want to understand why we chose that and how we came to that answer. So that ability to provide that amount of transparency um, has also driven to this sort of environment and then making sure that we use that environment to try and grow revenues, um, which the banks have been challenged with given the um, interest rate environment. So. Sure. Uh, additional perspective on financial services, why that has led the way? Uh, I particularly thought that um, at this point, and this applies for anyone, even in on financial services, this is a phenomena. I've noticed with a lot of the organization change aspects of things, and that is that organizations have hired people to do things around data for a very long time. And some uh, things, or maybe a second or third generation of uh, somebody to do the spreadsheet, hire somebody to clean it up and gather it and clean it up some more and then do the report or something like that. Um, and the show is in part a reaction to, well, maybe that's not such a good idea when 70% of my workforce, when I break down the hours, is, is hunting and gathering and cleaning up data. So um, there's a very powerful lesson in there and, and something that I can confirm magnitude uh, uh, is going on out there. This just costs are now a big consideration and a big for this. Let's get to the heart of the question then about what is the role of the CDOs. I'm going to ask each of our talk from from experience here, and maybe um, compare to if, if they happen to know how other 
organizations have the role. Uh, Ursula, if we could start with you, please. Um, what I mean, can you can you define your range of responsibilities relatively easily, or is it? Is it <laughs> you know, Probably sure not. Complex, but, <laughs> but maybe maybe just start with some of the major categories first. Yeah. So I'll add a little bit of context. My role um, has been in, has been interesting and it has evolved a bit in even the eighteen plus months that I've been in the role. Um, I I just um, reporting to my fourth bot in that period of time. So that goes to some of the where does this fit in an organization and what role should it play. Um, the uh, place that I'm in now is on the business side. So I had responsibility for the tech development before I had um, the development teams, the delivery teams for um, building our MDM solution as well as a new warehouse the, and BI tools, um, the L tools, that, that whole organization that now is uh, my, I'll say, partner organization. Still said technology. Um, what I moved over with is how do we um, get the most business value out of our data? So I think from from my perspective, it is a um, a clear role because it is meant to be a business role. My background was not in technology, and so um, although I got I got pretty deep in the technology over that time, it is a nice split because now I have a technology team that I partner with in order for me to deliver the business value. So what does that include? That includes um, uh, what you would constantly think of as data governance, uh, data stewardship, both for uh, what we consider our source systems or the accounting platforms, as well as data stewardship at the party or customer level um, for the new master data management tool we're putting in. And so enterprise ownership of those tools we, as a company, most business areas have tools that they use, and they are the business owners, provide the requirements, et cetera, for those. I have the responsibility of being the enterprise owner of enterprise assets like our warehouse and our customer master. And I have uh, the responsibility for driving uh, value uh, realization from uh, service providers, people like um, DMB, Axiom, Thomson Reuters, CapIQ, all of those tools, as well as um, leveraging the data that we have put into this infrastructure, our new um, data supply. So uh, there are BI uh, parts to that as well. So BI traditionally has a more technical flavor to it. I'm no longer responsible for the infrastructure and the environment, but I would be the one providing the requirements so that they could ensure that the environment meets our needs of our end users our analytics teams, our reporting teams, uh, and then, um, in addition, data quality. So data quality of the, from a source system all the way through uh, to through the warehouse and within the master data management tool. So, uh, you know, for the, uh, a, a team of sound, what? Um, can <laughs> I have a very small team. All right. Let's let's delve into um, a couple of points before I ask the same question. So, sure. um, uh, you said that you you were reporting to four different people over the course of the past uh, couple of years. Can you, yep. can you just define what those Changes what those roles were? Yes. An interesting um, new to to this as well that I didn't mention. Um, so first I was reporting to the CEO uh, for the guys. Uh, she then became the head of technology and operations. So I moved to report to the um, CIO for the uh, support company, so finance, risk, uh, you know, all of the more um, line of business. CIO that had that, I was reporting to him. Uh, we hired a new head of enterprise architecture that uh, came a, a data company. Um, in Cleveland, it was a startup uh, big data company. And so they moved me to report to him. And then within a couple of months, the shift over to this business side took place. Uh, it goes, I think, to what do you want the role to do? How much do you want the role responsible for? Should it have both business and tech? Should it sit in the 
side? Should it sit in the tech side? Um, that blended organization that we had, um, I think, was working. But you know, as the leadership of the company continue to evolve and some of these new players come in, di um, divide up, I think, made sense as well in moving me over to. So I now report to the um, gentleman that leads marketing analytics enterprise program management office for all of the large-scale projects and programs in the company, and then um, data. So it blends very nicely with those um, components as well. Um, following those changes, it, it feels like about the right place to be. It's, you know, it's challenging to work through. So what now, how do you draw the, the boxes around your piece, the tech piece, because I have to be very involved in, in the um, warehouse build, the BI work, the um, master management, because I'm now the requirements component of that, which means I'm still very involved in those tech projects, the ability for the delivery. We'll come back to some of those issues um, sure. shortly. Derek, um, let me ask you the same question. So uh, what general categories of responsibility do you have, please? You can divide uh, the responsibility categories right in the middle for me, and half of them fit into the business, and half of them fit into technology buckets. Um, so kind of a hybrid. Um, really seen as more of a, a, a business. I'm not a hardcore IT. I'm more of a business. Uh, and... Um, the areas that fall fair and square into into the business side of it are um, more like a kind of a of excellence. So small teams uh, with a, a very uh, deep reach into the enterprise, into all the different business units, um, and and those are are categorized in terms of um, data elements. You know, so the whole ownership uh, and stewardship. We've driven right up to the senior level of the organization. Um, the, the areas that fall into this are, you know, enterprise analytics, because uh, we have, you know, presenting many uh, teams of analytics folks um, in the different business units, and so federating out with them my core team um, and um, uh, so you know taking taking analytics really to the next step by pairing it up with with data science so those tend to be the the main sort of business focuses that I have um, on the technology side uh, two broad categories there one is uh, Data architecture, and the other is enterprise class data set you know, design and development and and um, running. Uh, so, um, enterprise data warehouse team, for example, uh, in my area. And as we you know continue to build new enterprise class data assets, um, those kinds of uh, you know, teams are in my area as well. Um, the data architecture side of it, you know, is all the, the things that you would expect to find in, you know, any uh, enterprise information management um, uh, organization chart. You know, so you know, data architects, uh, metadata teams, uh, data quality people, um, you know, data management and and so on uh, so uh, you know a pretty broad of responsibilities but but you know, blend of of business and technology um, the bed is more along a, a excellence and the technology side is is run more from a perspective of the, having a centralized team that deal with those specific aspects. Okay. Um, 
and, and thank you both. I'm, I'm going to reference a couple of the questions from the audience at the moment um, real quick because they're, they're related to your answers here. Um, so how many people – before I do that, Derek, I'm not sure that you answered the question of um, what to – and has that changed um, over the couple of years? structure you know uh, when I when was uh, originally approached on this um, uh, you know I, I had I think I, I had been uh, consulting to TD Red and I was consulting to the chief operating officer who, um, who you know T but he also has you know a bunch of, of enterprise shared service type um, you know responsibilities and uh, you know he runs a uh, you know, back office and uh, middle office, et cetera, et cetera. So um, the possibility was, was and still is in the COO org. And uh, so that, that changed. The, you know, agreed that the COO would be a great uh, for this role. But really, I mean, the real reason was because um, – Fortunate enough to work for the so in in five previous lives, I, I consulted to him. So we have had the ability to work together, and he knows, uh, you know, essentially what has to what happened, you know, in terms of the, the change that the enterprise needs to go through. So to me, the the whole question of you know to whom should the CDO report. Be answered by another question, which is who can most effectively help you to uh, bring about the change that you need effect in your organization. And clearly, in in my case, um, you know, because of our previous history together, uh, uh, but so just the fact that he's got a complete reach across the enterprise. It made really good sense to go with the the, the COO um, line. Sure. Um, um, yeah. Okay. Let me delve into a couple of these things, and, and John, I'm going to ask you, uh, please, to just uh, give perspective from as, as somebody who's probably seen many similar structures. Um, so it sounds like each of you, uh, uh, Derek. Are in a, a sort of a shared services model. Is that a reasonable for your structure? You, you provide services or expertise to a number of different lines or departments? Correct. Okay. Okay. So do you have, do you each have a dedicated team? Something, but, but, so in through folks who don't necessarily work directly for you. So, uh, um, I have a direct team, but in addition, um, I leverage, we have data stewards that sit in the business, and I actually leverage them. I would be a dotted line for them from a re reporting responsibility um, orientation. That, uh, the, the work that they need to do, they may have other roles, other functions that they perform within their line of business, but they do have an ability around um, data quality and data stewardship um, to me. So they're, they're, it's a, it's a, I've got some stuff that is centralized and some stuff that is more decentralized or federated out to the business area. Okay. To put some specifics on that. How, how many people do you have who work directly for this and Job functions that they have, please. Did it particular titles that reflect those functions? So, um, as of this change that is ebbing and flowing a little bit, the org is probably somewhere between 20 and 30 people because we were debating where some of the folks should sit or in the tech org or in my um, org. They would have, um, would be around uh, data management. Um, head of data governance, I have a um, data management analyst that works with a lot of the stewards in a little more um, uh, more specific things. I've got a, um, a DP 
Wikipedia leader, so somebody who's actually managing our metadata, the repository, provides requirements for the tech work, as well as working with our um, business users or end users on how to best leverage um, the encyclopedia, as well as with the stewards to ensure that it's um, properly maintained. Also, we've got a part of this um, org has what we call analytic capabilities, and that's where the um, BI functions and that data, the data service provider piece comes into play. That team uh, is about uh, seven people, take. and then also have, which is sort of unrelated to um, the, the the data uh, role, is I have a team that actually supports directly our um, community bank or the consumer side of the house with their sales tools, and reporting tools, et cetera. So that, that team's about 20 people, give or take. Same question, please, Derek. Can how many folks report directly to you, and and what job functions do they have? Folks that report direct um, in sequence of importance, they're all they're all equal on my side, and um, and uh, all critical components to uh, to what we get done. But I have a chief data scientist. I have an enterprise analytics director. Enterprise Governance Director, Enterprise Principal Data Architect, and Enterprise Data Tech Director. Last but not least, number six is Enterprise Data Asset Development Director. Of the of the final for you essentially have a paper for each of those. Do they then have additional or, or not? They do, they, they do have uh, additional folks. Um, I'm really at liberty to disclose numbers of teams. Uh, they, do have, they do have teams. And, and as I mentioned before, the um, on the uh, on the business related functions is on you know a small team or, or that that, that um, really provides a center of excellence uh, and a federated blend um, and then um, on the on the more technology focused things there it's you know a, it's central team so you John um, the analysts described their organization compared to others that you have seen, and uh, is there something that maybe you it to either one uh, have any advice on on the structures? I work on this. I think I just had to talk. <laughs> but, uh, um, uh, what I see is is and you heard I think from our two other panelists um, uh, a pro different view different quantities um, of people and that's what I see everywhere I've got uh, CEOs I've talked with that have zero direct reports and they are an influencer and uh, um, and and uh, kind of a big question mark as to what's you know going to happen there. To see uh, was that um, have been essentially replaced with what used to be called the uh, director or vice president of enterprise information management. They've got all the BI, uh, all the data, all the analytics, and 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 that's and so. Um, in terms of a standard model, there isn't one. In ICE, uh, the the. Uh, um, not going into or knowing specifics, the one thing I always uh, bring up uh, with, with uh, um, uh, NP or companies that want to have a CDO, for example, I had a CEO ask me, should I have a CDO? And and I said, well, do you have an accountable for information and data? And he's like, accountable for information and data. And I said, well, you need somebody in between to herd the cats to uh, to represent that. Well, maybe. So the first thing I, I advise is what 
is that person accountable for? Um, and, and, and maybe the uh, panelists want to weigh in and counter me or whatever. And what are the authorities uh, that they have? I, it, it was pretty clear from the organization that were described that there are some accountabilities and some things that have to get done in some areas. And then some of the other areas are those areas where we really get challenged uh, data governance because of some of the, the factors and and the organizational aspects where sometimes the authority and the accountabilities and the and the cover um, are are you know greatly across those. So I would I would say that would be my first talk uh, is is you know what what can you quantify the authority? Can you quantify your accountabilities? And 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 does everybody understand those? Let me turn that question over to the panelists then. Um, uh, in a position to answer John's question. Um, sure. yeah. so, so, as far as quantifying, you know, the responsibilities and and accountabilities, um, you know, because it's so new, a lot of things that we're doing, like you know, data science, for example, uh, you know, it's the first question is, is like. What you know, and and why should I be passionate about it? Uh, so there's, you know, a lot of this has to do with education initially. So, uh, it's a little bit fuzzy in those kinds of situations. However, in in places like you know the enterprise data warehouse, we've already got an established um, you know case of of work that gets done and uh, wait. You ways of measuring uh, value that we're getting out of the enterprise data well. So it's a, it's a bit of a blend, you know, um, of areas that can be really well defined and others that are emerging. That, that's probably the, the best way to, to describe it in, in overview. Ursula, the question about uh, measurement and the yeah, so, um, I think from perspective, as we um, can better articulate where we're trying to head with it, because I think it is still evolving leadership um, perspective here, um, but we have the way we actually measure the work is around um, business value realization on the spend that we do have as well as some sustainability metrics. So that goes to things like about usage of our metadata repository, um, and, and data quality, um, uh, implementation of the uh, master data management, and then the leveraging of that to meet the needs of other projects that are going on within the company. Um, from a warehouse perspective, um, it, it's, it, it's going continue to evolve on how we'll measure it, but um, we do have some measurements today that are very focused around um, how we realize value from the uh, um, implementation of both the technology as well as business process around the data management side. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there are numerous questions from the audience I'd like to try to get to, please. Let me um, uh, bundle three of them together here. Um, Quick one for you, Derek, please. A uh, question about what does the data assets development manager do? You mentioned that as one of the folks who reports directly to you. Okay. Any enterprise data asset, any enterprise class data asset. So enterprise data warehouse is obviously one of those. Um, but, you know, our master data management, uh, you know, uh, capability our reference data management capability, um, our, uh, our data, um, you know, storage and exploration uh, environment, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Anything that is an enterprise class data asset is essentially under the directorship of, of, of this individual. Uh, uh, there is you know, the basic thing of, um, you know, design, build, and implement, and, and operate and run, um, you know, and maintain. Uh, so, you know, it's a 
complete uh, spectrum uh, around those enterprise class data assets. Would development in that context mean development or, or system development around that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, this question here for whoever would like to um, is about Maturity level. Um, how does the data management maturity level of the organization a value that the CDO role can provide? So, in the case of of and TD Ameritrade, how much sure were the or was the function at the time the CDO role was created? I can join if, if that's okay. Yep. Um, the, uh, it was early days. I, I think, um, you know, as a as a as a firm, um, there uh, some action that had been given sporadically to uh, enterprise data, but not you know consistent basis, and uh, so it was uh, it was really. Um, of starting from from ground zero, um, so a situation like that, it, it's absolutely true. Uh, what the question is suggesting is that, that you've you've a fair amount of you know functional functional stuff that needs to get put in place. It's like, you know, building a house, and you know you've got to get the foundation in, you've got to get the plumbing done, and you've got to you know figure all those basics can really start making huge risks on the finish uh the finish loss. Um so there was obviously also uh, you know, a lot of work had been done on on analytics um but and done more kind of in silos um and the opportunity when we started up the role was about bringing those silos together and highlighting areas where we can, as a joint team, you know, address very specific items that everyone can get benefit out of, and then the unique individual things that that are unique to specific parts of the enterprise to continue those as as separate items, but identify those those wide things that everyone could get a, you know, a from. What was the experience at KeyBank? So we were in the early, early days. Um, we were uh, we've been operating very heavily in silos, and so I would say, uh, from a, at an enterprise level, we were probably at that zero to one level. Some pockets better than that, um, but nothing really from an enterprise perspective. A number of failed uh, data governance initiatives, a couple of very large ones in the 15 years that I've been here, as well as. Um, some smaller ones that were um, spearheaded within lines of business. So I think across the board, I would have said we were uh, extremely immature. Part of the reason, I think, for creating the role was somebody to shepherd us through that process and really care about data, be the spokesperson. Um, we used the, some, some, somebody else say, like, be the conscience of data. So uh, I think that's really by being as immature from a, the capability maturity model to uh, what we were trying to do. I think that is part of the impetus for creation of the role. Okay. Eight cases sounds like the role helped to bring greater to the. John, I'm interested in your opinion there. Um, is that for bringing in a CTO, uh, uh, intuitively it sounds like a little bit of invitation to, to, despite the fact that the both uh, are able to being able to make it work. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of caution folks when they say, "Well, we're we're level whatever, uh, at whatever maturity scale they've uh, uh, adopt, and we're not mature for a CTO." Or, or we want CDO to increase maturity scale. 
um, I, I, I hesitate to, to, that you tie uh, the maturity curve to the value the CO is bringing to the organization. I think no matter what your point on a curve, um, uh, what this person is has to bring value to the organization or you wouldn't be bringing that person in. Uh, and To me, the, the maturity is, is a measurement of uh, where you were when the CEO function uh, came about to where you where you want to be. Um, you know, just you could say that, that just in the CDO and saying that you want somebody in charge of the information asset that is a kind of some type of mature, at least awareness of the need to to change uh, uh, maturity. Uh, um, I like to I like to use that as a, an independent uh, um, uh, assessment of of where you are, but not the driver of value, more of a of a progress uh, metric. Um. Sure. Okay. Um, hey, Tony. I would just add to that. I would totally yeah. agree. We we were not the um, we did not directly tie the maturity to the creation of the role. The the way I described sort of that um, crisis we had around projects really drove that. And if if tried to parallel the where we were maturity wise to the creation of the role, there probably is some linkage in the fact that there, we weren't very mature. But that's not. We didn't create the role in order to drive that maturity up the curve. Right. It just when I thought. I mean, let's look at it hypothetically. So you have an organization that says we're a maturity four out of five, or and whatever that means to them, right? They're a four out of five. So now you need a CDO to bring us from four to five. I think a lot of organizations would kill to figure out how you got from one to four without the CDO. So you, you, you know, again, to reinforce the point, you want to kind of separate the two. You don't, you don't necessarily want the CDO to, to come in and just move it from a one to a two to a two or a three. There's got to be some other some other metric and some other standard there, or or you won't know what this person's supposed to be doing. Sure, um, be talking about data management maturity levels on whatever future shows. So I'm, I'm going to um, try to take a couple more questions in the short period of time that we have here, and then I have a point to, to on the list. Um, real quickly, Akita and Titi, a question about who owns the data. Presumably the question there is, you know, is it is your department or its business? Who owns the data and who owns the platforms or system? So, so from, I yep. mentioned earlier, the platform side of it, um, those prize tools I own from a business perspective. Um, but from an owning the data, um, lines of business own the data that they um, are respond that are part of the creation of it, right? Selling, surfing, all of that stuff is customer um, data from that international stuff. The businesses own um, that I've got is to be that conscience, to make sure that we are um, taking care of it in a way that it's treated like an that like assets we have, like people, like money, um, and then, um, aren't just thinking of it as like something we have to do. So, so keeping us focused on the fact that they actually are responsible and accountable for their data, off what that meant. So I think that's where the governance role comes into play, which is to explain what is the most important stuff that we need them to maintain. It's not everything. Everything is, doesn't have the same level of importance to us, and so how do I help prioritize for them where they need to be directing their attentions to ensure that this quote unquote ownership as an enterprise asset um, is managed properly? Sure. Kind of um, similar on, on our side. Uh, you know, I I chair the um, data owners council. It's made up of, you know, the business leads, the main directors of the various, um, you know, units. And uh, one of the earliest things we did was we we built, you know, a, a subject area data model. And, you know, that group through the model and uh, figuring out. Uh, collaboratively with them, how we would assign ownership uh, so that we, 
you know, really after you know, actually one or two meetings, we're able to every single subject uh, in the enterprise. Um, so, um, did I get any of those? Yes, I did. <laughs> Uh, but it was thing that you would expect would be something in my area. So the theory of, of, of metadata, for example, belongs to me. Uh, the red data management um, area belongs to me. Now, each, um, each individual owner, uh, it, you know, it's established at a, at, a, at a subject area, but of course, when you look at the attributes and you go down into each of the attributes, you're going to find that there are certain things that, well, no, it's in that subject, it doesn't make sense for me to own that. And again, we've got a process whereby we can, um, you know, within a 24 hour period, um, our ownership, you know, um, uh, for specific attributes, so it's a you know it's a kind of a matrix of ownership that uh, that we've developed, and it's it's working very very well. Um, but to Ursula's point, you know, it's it's not a question of, of ownership being uh, something that you've got to get every single data item, uh, you know, in in the uh, enterprise. You want to start by identifying critical data elements and seeing and prioritizing on those and, and um, increasing your way through that. Um, as far as the platforms are concerned, you know, we, we own the Enterprise Data Warehouse platform. Um, as we start bringing on some of these other um, enterprise uh, uh, assets, um, we uh, we will be on those as well. Okay. So uh, just, there's a couple of questions from the audience here about um, questions, I guess. Um, uh, from somebody who's a, a 20 senior business intelligence architect, um, uh, what what sort of critical success factors would help? A green move closer to so, and, and overlay a question on that about how are technical skills versus business skills in the success of the, the role. So, uh, I'll give I'll give you first crack at at those. I think each company is probably slightly different about what they're looking for um, in a in the CDO role, um, I think probably we, there was a gentleman actually um, here at Key that had been in architecture for quite a long time, not on the B side, but in um, overall, uh, I would say data architecture. And, um, and the number one thing that uh, they gave him on what he needed to do more or learn more about was the business. So how does, how do you get value from using data from a business perspective? Understanding the business's per, um, uh, side of what's needed from the data. The business, at least from our perspective, has, has been changed in articulating uh, requirements. So the role that I thought of is that in between being a help liaison between the business and the technology folks speaking both languages in order to translate what the businesses are trying to accomplish, how they run their businesses, in order to um, drive the uh, from a data standpoint. So the challenge, um, I think, is how do you accumulate the, the, the human to be able to show the you from both the business side and the tech side combined? So I think the heavy business orient, orient and that learning around the business stuff, that was probably the, the thing I'd recommend doing. Okay. We're, we're actually uh, out of time. Derek, I'm going to ask you to, to uh Side on this final question because I, I do ask John. John, you you can talk to a lot of companies about those. What what do you see as the call? Um, you know, hiring the right person for the role. The individual. Uh, I'll take fifteen 
second response here for time. The individual has to have an understanding of enterprise information management at, on the E and not the information management part. Community skills have to be excellent, especially in the area of building alliances and communicating concepts uh, and being very clear and concise. The business acumen has to be there. And the business understand the environment of the whole your business, but the entire marketplace that you're you're in, and be able to do a business alignment of the data to that and be conversion to that. And lastly, I think they have to have the mind uh, like a, an engineer, uh, someone who can go from the abstract uh, to deployment and cross that uh, conceptual bridge and explain what's going on uh, to people uh, along the way. Uh, and they just can't be totally hung up on data, they have to be more hung up on the success of the organization uh, first and, and data second. Well, there are a couple of unanswered questions here around data quality. Um, we will return to those in a future session. Um, thank you, thank you us, Derek and John, for joining us today. I'd like to thank our audience likewise for your questions and for the past hour. Uh, let me make one final plug for the division conference coming up April 29 through 30 in Austin, Texas. Uh, I, I hope to see many of you join that particular event, including our three panelists. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the first Tuesday of, of uh, May for next in our webinar series on the CDO agenda. Thank you. And I'll hand back to you for a quick wrap up. And, and thank you again to uh, our panelists for the fabulous discussion. Uh, and just everyone, we will be posting the recording of this webinar uh, to dataversity.net within two business days. And I will send out a follow up email to let you know the links and other requested information along with that. And again, thanks, as Tony mentioned, thanks for attending and for your fabulous questions and interaction with our webinars. Hope everyone has a great day. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time and, and uh, input today. It was a very good discussion, I thought. Thank you. Yeah, thank